agency creates digital solutions to help businesses and also with their brands. And with me is Jonas Mathoni, the CEO and founder of DVA, to talk about what it is you do and, and kind of some of the common problems that businesses face. So let's start with that. I mean, what are some of the common business mistakes that they do right now? Well, I think uh, the, key, the key thing is uh, businesses not taking advantage of uh, exploring different marketing channels. So just being able to uh, explore different marketing channels allows you to really understand what of those channels are actually where your audience shop at, where your audience go to look for the solutions that you offer. So being, uh, having that ability, or just uh, having a team that's going to help you explore those different marketing channels is going to help you really define where your audience sits, right? Because um, you know a lot of companies want to focus on just one thing and spend money on it, but uh, being able to diversify where you put your money in terms of what uh, marketing channels, so whether you're going to put it on social, Google, or just even organic SEO, because um, you're really putting in the, the, the footprint of where you want to drive your business 10 years to come. Yeah, yeah. okay. So that makes a lot of sense. Just explore all your options and know what all is available to you. So um, what? how does a business know when their marketing campaign is successful? Are there metrics that they can use? Correct. Well, uh, when you're, when you're running, say, paid advertising, you know your business is doing well based on the ROARS. So uh, that's uh, return on ad spend. Uh, the funny thing is a lot of businesses don't even know that term in itself, mm-hmm. right? So um, this is where it's important to see how much you're putting out and how much you're getting back, right? So if you're going to put a dollar and get four dollars back, that means that your, your business is actually turning a profit. But there's also uh, the cost of goods sold. So there's different things to look at whenever you're looking at what your ROAS are going to look like. So just being able to really have um, a, 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 a bad eye view of how your marketing is performing so you can really measure how your ROAS are, are, are coming in. Yeah. yeah. What about social media? What role does that play in marketing? What makes an effective social media campaign? Uh, an effective social media campaign um, so there's, there's a couple of uh, sides to social media. So there's a paid advertising where you have to pay to really um, acquire that customer. And then there's the organic one. So on the organic side, you know, you want to leverage social media to establish trust with your, with your, with your, with, for your company. So whenever you're running uh, any sort of marketing, a lot of buyers nowadays want to go into your social media, kind of see how, how, you, how, how you look on that side. So having a really good, refined, or uh, defined social media uh, strategy is going to really help build that trust and increase the conversion and people doing business with you. Yeah. yeah. What, how do they know they're being effective? It, it doesn't depend on the brand, like how you present yourself on social media. Correct. So brand perception is very important. Uh, and also just, uh, you know, social media... Um, is, is, a, is a good way for you to establish brand integrity also. So you want to make sure that the messaging in your marketing aligns with what you're putting on social media. Yeah, yeah very important. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, how can businesses use email marketing? Um, I get a lot of emails. How do they stand out and kind of, it's a very crowded field. Correct. I mean, what, what do you recommend? Well, email marketing is one of those uh, things that are never going to go away, right? Yeah. I'm a victim of just having so many different uh, subscriptions for, for where I shop, things that are, uh, I, I like to learn more about. But uh, it's not just about receiving the emails, but what does that email really present itself to me as, right? So part of email marketing uh, is making sure that you're, you're leveraging, like you're leveraging, for example, if you're, if you're doing SEO and you're writing topics uh, on different uh, problems, you want to also be able to share that with your email marketing. At that, you really want to treat your email marketing as a relationship bank. And he, let me explain why. So we had a client that had 1.4 million emails um, and with an open rate of 0.1%, right? And, and here's the reason. They, why? Because all they focused on is really selling all the emails that are coming with sales okay so we came in uh cleaned up that list to eight hundred thousand. so six hundred thousand emails were basically irrelevant and then started uh, sending goodwill content so this is the same content that we use for the seo program we started sending out and that open rate became 30 30 percent so from 0.1 percent to 30 percent 
And then at the end of the 12th month, email marketing was the highest number, uh, highest marketing channel in terms of conversion. So they made more money in email marketing in 12 months than they'd done in the previous four years. Interesting. Yeah. You mentioned something crucial there. They were focused on selling. Correct. I guess it was kind of obvious, so people just immediately tuned it out. Exactly. Where you're focused more on just building your brand yeah. and selling that way. Kind yeah, of. so your email list subscriber is a, is, is a, is a bank, right? So we, we call it relationship bank. Uh, so when you send that Google content, you're, uh, you're depositing into the bank. When you send that sales email, you are withdrawing from the bank. So you want to have a, a balance, just like you balance your, your books um, uh, financially, and not focus just on sales, but really giving them something they're going to want to hold on to just because it's offered them so much value. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, it seems like a lot of these search engines are kind of tweaking their algorithms a lot. They're making a lot of changes. How do you stay on top of that? Um, well, we eat, live, and breathe digital marketing. Um, and for us to be able to really stay on top of what's going on with the changes um, is investing time in also research. But uh, we're also plugged into a huge network um, of just marketing professionals. Uh, we also partnered with Google. But you know, especially with the, with the new changes that have happened with Chat GPT, uh, and then also now Google coming up with their own, yeah. they call Bird. Bird, right? Yeah. So that, uh, as a matter of fact, for agencies like that, or like us, that's the best thing that's ever happened for us because the way the Google algorith algorithm is going to transform to is being the top three results are going to be the most critical. So uh, being that um, our agency. Uh, is highly focused on SEO, so it, it does it does do us good as an agency that Google uh, is making all these changes because now we're really able to place our customers in a, at a place where they're actually winning. Yeah. Let me ask you about AI. <laughs> yeah, since you brought it up, yeah. have you kind of figured that out yet? Like how people can digital digitally market with artificial intelligence? Correct. So um, I, I get that question all the time, uh, especially uh, the most popular one is ChatGPT. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people think that it can, it's going to replace human beings. It's going to replace, um, you know, people that actually do the the manual work. Mm -hmm. When especially when it comes to say SEO. But in all honesty, I think ChatGPT is a good program, but if you're using it as, a, as an assistant, right? Because it's going gonna, it's gonna to give you one answer the way you don't have to go search for everything, but it, it, it's not going to help you grow your brand. It's not going to help you really, um, really communicate exactly the way you want to communicate, right? And, uh, and, uh, but here's the thing. Um, I think the, the ChatGPT... If used correctly, for example, to create bylines and topics that you can use for your social media, so you can literally tell it, give me 30 different topics for social media, uh, for Twitter posts, and it's going to give you really 30 uh, different 30 uh, topics based on, uh, on on the command that you gave it on the on the on the on the, on the program. But um, it, it's a, it's a, it's evolving, um, and uh, it's, I think for us as an agency. And myself, that I, I really love, like just learning new things as they come up. It's exciting, yeah. but um, I, I, no one can really give you an answer of how where AI is going to be in the future. But it's it is the thing right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it is fascinating when you Correct. read these conversations Correct. and what you know, the direction it goes yeah. and how accurate it can be, but how kind of weird it can be. I mean, too, yeah, so. you can draw art with AI now. There's so yeah, many yeah. different things you can do. Yeah. yeah. So what would you say um, makes Deviate different than other digital marketing agencies? Um, I, I get that asked that a lot too, <laughs> but uh, it starts with the name. So I, I worked corporate for about seven and a half years, and I wanted to establish something that is non-corporate, although I work with a lot of corporations. But the reason for that is because um, I wanted to create a culture within our company uh, that, that every person that is part of our team is a business owner. But, uh, but the, the real reason why we're different is because we're not the agency client type of, a type of agency. We come in and act as an extension of a marketing team. Uh, the other thing too is we focus mostly on strategy, right? A lot of companies and business owners that we talk to, um, at, at the beginning, they always think they have a strategy, but when, when, we talk, when they talk to us, 
it, it turns out most of the things that tr trying to do is just planning, you know. So when, when you think of planning, we want to think of it as a set of, set of activities. We want to open an office here. We want to expand to this location. We want to hire more people. We want to introduce certain products. Mm -hmm. So we come in uh, and, and put a strategy. And in, in essence, it's more of, the, of a theory. So it's, you want to look at it uh, as a theory. So basically, putting you out of field where you're going to win. So how do we do that? Um, we identify the opportunities that you have and then we put a theory around it. So here is where we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna play. So the, here's a playing field, and this is how we're gonna position you to win in that play field, to create demand, or to put you in a position to where your consumers wanna buy for you from you than your competition. Yeah. yeah. And then last but not least is um, the the the. The one thing that we're doing as of recent is really coming into companies and put, putting a, a marketing strategy around their, their product or service, but also streamlining their whole sales process. So, uh, so what, what, what I mean by that is um, we come in, identify what your plans are, put a strategy around your plan so we can win, but also help really refine and even really have that sharpened sales team that's going to be able to turn all your your inbounds into profits yeah, yeah. okay yeah. interesting thank you so much Jonas, for thank coming. you for having me again yeah thank you so much appreciate it